Hello and welcome along to the next in this series of videos where we are setting up and configuring the Chocolatey uh, quick deployment environment. So, so far we have uh, downloaded and extracted the base image that is QDE and we have loaded it into our uh, VMware Fusion uh, hypervisor on my machine, which is a Mac. We have uh, set it up so it's got the uh, recommended uh, hard drive capacity, memory capacity, etc. Uh, and now we've just been through and we've set up uh, Chocolatey and central management running on this machine. So we now have a license package that contains our Chocolatey license.xml file. And we have enabled uh, Chocolatey central management on this machine. And we've now got a single machine, which is Chocolatey server reporting into itself. Now, the next part of the setup within our uh, readme.html file here is to have a look at Nexus. So Nexus is a repository server for chocolatey packages. Uh, it also does other uh, packaging formats, uh, NuGet packages, uh, NPM packages, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the reason that we've chosen to uh, include it within our uh, QDE setup here is it's really simple to get up and running with. Uh, it has... The, the version that we've installed is the free and open source version, um, but there are other versions of Nexus which include uh, other functionality, high availability, uh, etc. So we're just using the uh, the free version that you can get up and running. And what we've done is we've pre-configured it and set it up in the way that uh, conforms to Chocolatey best practices. So let's take a look at that. So I'm going to right click on here and I'm going to say open a new tab, and that will take us to the default Nexus interface. So I'm gonna click on sign in here, and I'm gonna grab the uh, username and password from the readme, and the password is here. I'm gonna paste that in. Uh, setup wizard uh, needs to walk through, so I'm gonna say never up here, and I'm gonna say next to here. And we obviously need to change the password. So the password that we've shipped is the default one, um, but we want you to create a new one. So go ahead and put in a password and make sure that it matches the uh, password complexity requirements of this. I'm gonna click next. Now, what we are being asked for here is to config whether you want to configure anonymous access to these repositories. Now, this is completely a decision that you need to make uh, for yourselves. Um, in my setup, I'm probably gonna say configure anonymous access, but obviously if you are opening up uh, this QDE server to uh, the internet or to uh, a larger part of your organization, you may want to restrict that. So uh, Nexus fully allows you to uh, create uh, RBAC permissions for uh, the repositories that you have uh, set up. Uh, I'm gonna say enable uh, anonymous access, again, just because it makes certain things uh, from a demo perspective a little bit easier. Uh, but I'm gonna say uh, next to that, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish here. So. Uh, the Nexus documentation is uh, quite comprehensive. So if you want to uh, figure out what's going on in terms of setting up permissions, definitely go and take a look there. Okay, so now that I'm logged in here, I'm gonna click on browse. And what we'll see here is that we've pre-set up a number of different uh, repository feeds here. So if I zoom in just a little bit more, what we'll see is that there is a Choco test repository there is a chocolatey internal repository. And in that chocolatey internal repository, we already have pre-downloaded and pre-set up a number of different packages. So we basically went through some of the uh, top, uh, the most popular packages on chocolatey.org and we have run our package internalizer and we have taken those packages and we've put them into this chocolatey internal feed. So all of these packages can be consumed from uh, this uh, chocolate internal feed, and none of these will reach out to the internet. All of the installers that are required to install any of these packages are already on this machine. So, and that's really where we're, that terminology, quick deployment environment comes into play. So if you wanted to be able to install Skype or Slack or TeamViewer <clears throat> or any of these uh, applications, they are already available in this Nexus repository. So again, they won't reach out to the internet. They are here ready to be consumed straight away. This uh, chocolate test that I went on to before, it doesn't have any packages on there just now, but once we start playing with Jenkins, then that's where the chocolate test repository will come into play. And we'll come back to that in a little bit. The other one that we've got here is a, a group repository. 
So if we look at that, you'll see that it's still, it's got a bunch of packages in it. The distinction here is that this is a group repository. It uh, combines more than one feed together. So if we click on here, or I might have to go up to settings. So if we go up to here and look at repositories and we look at the group, then we'll see that this repository is a group that's made up of Chocolatey Internal and the community uh, and the Chocolatey Community Repository. Now, what I said before was up here, Choco Source told us that the Chocolatey Community Repository was disabled, and it absolutely is. However, we've set up this group repository that, if required, you can still make the community repository available to your uh, clients that are using it. And what that means is that if a package doesn't exist uh, on the chocolatey internal feed, it will reach out to the community repository and it'll pull it in and it will cache it locally uh, in the same feed. Now, that is a setup configuration that you can definitely do. But in terms of how we're going to use it, we're not going to use this uh, group repository uh, straight away. Instead, we're going to use another mechanism to keep the packages in our community chocolatey internal feed up to date. Okay, so that's what's happening here. Um, so this one is a proxy, what's known as a proxy repository. It proxies to somewhere else. So if we look at the settings of that, we will see that this is a proxy to the uh, default URL is the community repository. So we've set them up so that you don't have to have to worry about them, but the one that's being used based on the source configuration on this machine is chocolate internal. That's the one that's actually being used here. And the final one there is, let's go back to the browse view. And the final one that we haven't spoken about is the choco install which is, ah, that's, so this is a different kind of repository. So uh, I mentioned before that Nexus has uh, different sort of repositories. It can, it can do chocolate packages, it can do uh, NPM packages, it can do Maven packages. One of the other things it can do are raw files. So it, it essentially is a web server. So if you've got some files here, you can serve them and make them available to other, other people. So what we've got here, <clears throat> are the client setup scripts. So when we come to set up a client machine with Chocolatey, we can use these files here uh, in our raw repository to reach out to those files to do the installation of the necessary components. Now we'll come on to that in a separate video, but it's the Nexus repository that is going to handle that um, hosting those files for us. So any files that you want to host here, uh, in the raw repository, you absolutely can. And then you just get a, uh, a URL that you can point to and it will download and set those up. So with that, that's us talked about the different components of Nexus. Uh, the one thing that we need to do is to reset the API key. So what we uh, have here is this is the default API key. Now what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna want to change that. And the way that we can do that is uh, if I go over here, you may want to change the API key before you start doing things. So if we do, we click on our username in the upper right hand corner, so that's on this guy. And then here's our NuGet API key. So the, the suggestion there is to uh, reset that API key. So I'm gonna click on my reset here. I'm gonna to need to authenticate. So I'm gonna put in the password that I used earlier. And that's gonna give me this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And I'm just gonna put this into a notepad for later so that I don't lose it, because once you've done it, you can't get it back. So if I go ahead and close this window, I can't get that API key back, so I'd have to reset it again. So with that done, I need to run this command to uh, re-authenticate. So the setup would have used the API key that was listed up here, and I need to change that so that uh, the API key is still authenticated. So I'm gonna grab this, and I'm going to paste this into this notepad window. And I'm going to take this and cut it. And I'm going to put this into here. I'm going to grab all of that command. And I'm going to clear this screen. I'm going to paste it in. <clears throat> and that is simply adding that API key into uh, my persisted 
information within Chocolatey. So when I want to push a package to that Chocolatey internal repository, uh, it's already set up and configured, ready to be used. So that's the last thing that we needed to do there in terms of looking at Nexus. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is Jenkins. So I'm going to stop this video and uh, you can join me in the next one where we're going to talk about that.